Welcome to the NerdStalker Tech Week Update. I am Adolfo Fronda at NerdStalker on Twitter here with my friend, and you are... I'm Greg Gloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. How you doing, man? Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, it's been a couple weeks off for us people. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but we do have a 24-7 uh, channel you can check us out. We'll mention later. But uh, Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you want to see us. <laughs> so, yeah, Greg, absolutely. world in tech, man. What is happening here? This, this is a really interesting, uh, in, very intriguing uh, PayPal uh, ar- article that you posted here. Tell us oh, more. Oh, thanks. Um, so, anyway, thanks to Sarah Lacey at Pando Daily, which is a great, great, great articles down there about Silicon Valley. Exa- basically, the title of the article was, Exactly How Screwed Is PayPal? And then the, the hint goes, very. Mm. Um, she gives three reasons, uh, you know, something to think about, you know, why PayPal is screwed. I, I think, um, you know, since they've been riding the eBay horse, uh, you know, uh, success for, you know, well over 10 years, uh, they feel that you know eBay's relevance isn't as as relevant as it used to be. Um, I think uh, Amazon has been, you know, uh, chipping away at them, and and I think you know they're not the best deal on the planet. Have they really reached out and and helped uh, their stores? You know, remember eBay stores? You know, they used to they should have been these little little e-commerce mega centers, right? As they were taunting them, you know, earlier in in the, in the day, and they're. Uh, I don't know if really a lot of stores really kind of, you know, major brands really are are on, on eBay anymore, right? Mm. Uh, so I think I'm a little bit worried about that. True. Um, mm. I, I think secondly, uh, she points out that, uh, the you know, uh, because of that, uh, e- PayPal has coasted. Um, you know, um, really haven't had a chance to in- innovate until recently, right? And I think... You know, the digital wallet product is, eh, you know, mm. and, and, you know, thirdly, you know, now, now, since they haven't been innovating, they're facing serious competition. You know, we got, we got Square and, you know, if you look at all the ads Square is putting out there for looking for operational people, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to launch this thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be Square everything, you know, point of sale Square. I mean, it's going to be everything, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know. Let, let's let's see what happens, but and and then like you said, I I think we talked offline, but you know, mm-hmm. I you talked a little bit about you know even the transactional world is uh, you know Visa and yeah. and Mastercard yeah. isn't going to lay down, right? Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a couple of points uh, from the payment transaction perspective. I know you mentioned Apple too, uh, could be a huge mm-hmm. player in this too. I mean, even with they're saying with all those tens of millions of iTunes accounts out there, uh, you could just flip that switch on and, and buy everything through your Apple account, right? Um, right. And, and then, yeah, as you mentioned, everyone's trying to get into this in Square's space right now, uh, pay, mm. pay, pay, PayPal included, actually, I, I believe, being one of them. Right. Uh, and the major credit card carriers. And eBay itself also, although they have been going through several UX changes, and from right here, their mobile um, application is supposed to be pretty nice. Uh, and the UI, because that was one of the, I think, ma- major complaints with eBay itself was that sellers were having a hard time getting their, you had to jump through all these hoops to get your items onto onto eBay itself in order to, to sell. And then additionally, consumers had to go through all these crazy options and stuff uh, in order to buy something. And supposedly that's been simplified to, to some extent. But yeah, they they bit, they tend to be between uh, a couple tough uh, competitors here, one being so, sort of like Craigslist and uh, uh, Amazon. It's it's that's yeah. very tough. Yeah, what do you think, Rick? Yeah, yeah, no, I no, I think I think the art. That's a very good point you bring up between you know Craigslist and 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 Amazon, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's uh, it's hard to figure. You know, I think they they need a serious revamp of their UI as well. I mean, I, though you know, I think early in the day it was kind of fun to kind of go through those lists. It isn't anymore. Yeah. And you know, you know, you don't really get a lot of bargains. It's kind of like you buy it now, buy it now. Mm. Everything's buy it now. Right. There's hardly any really bidding anymore. It mm. seems like so. So, uh, you know, and especially you know, if you go to Amazon, you get a better deal. Yeah. Why do you have to bid for it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. True. You know. So. So anyway, hey, well, so I, I like this next one that you had. You tweeted this out about Android fragmentation, uh, which makes some sense to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> What's going yeah. on there? So this is uh, an article, a uh, great post, a uh, thought piece by uh, Fred Wilson. He he uh, posts at the AVC article of VC. He's a venture capitalist. And, yeah, what he, he says is Android fragmentation is sort of the title of this thing. And his, mm. his, his points basically are that uh, – 
you know, the Amazon fired is Android. And when they build a phone, which he suspects they will, it's also going to be Android. Uh, when Facebook makes a phone, which he suspects they also they will also, it's going to be Android. Um, mm. So what he's, his conclusion is that the whole market is basically two operating systems, right? It's Android and iOS. And everyone else is simply fighting for scraps at, you know, go forward even. He said not only additionally at this point, but go forward. That's pretty much going to be the case. Um, right. So it, the benefits, though, of this uh, fragmentation, he says, is that you get w wider adoption equals fragmentation, right? And mm. and and mm. vice versa. Fragmentation equals wider adoption. Uh, think Windows, okay. right? Back in the day, um, mm. he thinks fragmentation is a short-term pain and a long-term gain for Android. Um, and also, wow. what he's telling developers, his suggestion to developers um, and entrepreneurs is for developers, he suggests building for Android and iOS and forgetting about everyone else. Period is is what he wow. says and reason is um and specifically for apps that are not looking to get paid he suggests building for android first and then uh, ios Whoa. second and so Whoa. you know it's it's interesting when you think about that that type of perspective because um mm. you, you know a lot of people the first question is what do you mean apps that that aren't looking to get paid well there's a lot of these type of apps right think of facebook for instance yeah. right um, or, or other types of apps like that where you're just trying to get sort of eye eyeballs or users, right, in hopes right. of either ad some sort of advertising revenue, which is probably it, or, or some sort of analytic sell or something like that, or an eventual mm. pivot, right, so that you can sell right. maybe uh, plus options or something like that or advanced usage or something like that, features or something like that. So, right, right. Yeah, yeah just uh, thought-provoking piece. No, I I think you're you're you know when you when you did that when I saw the Android fragmentation I thought it was going to be a negative piece but actually it was kind of a complimentary piece um, you know when you thought about it right uh, especially if he mentioned that you need to develop on maybe Android first um, I think one of the problems you have with when any app store that has you know hundreds of thousands of of, of products um, you know how do you get noticed right? Right, right how do you how do you figure this out right right so you you know, I think that's going to be, continue to be a problem. Um, you know, catch uh, my interview this week. I mm -hmm. think I, we released it about a mobile CRM app, uh, a platform that allows you to really kind of manage through those uh, shark-infested waters called apps mm -hmm. for developers. So right. um, there's a really good product called AppBoy out there that really kind of helps with that. But but I, I, awesome. I think, wow, that yeah, that's a really great PC found there. I, I totally agree with that guy, actually. I think it might be it might be time that you kind of pay attention to the Android market a little bit a little bit uh, closer at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know? But Greg, um, you know, this one yeah. is oddly enough hitting me right uh, at the right time because um, <laughs> the best podcast app Apple is hiding from me. You gotta let me know, you know, because I've been looking for a podcast app because I am not too happy with the Apple's uh, podcast application. But anyways, what's the scoop? Well. Hey, they, you know, they released their official podcast app, right, mm -hmm. as you know, and, and it just appears, you know, Apple's juicing the search results as uh, Dylan Love from, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Business Insider, uh, uh, SAI, uh, the writes, um, you know, when you search podcasts in the App Store, guess, guess which one floats to the top? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, and, you know. The the Google guys, you know, are are blamed for that as well in their you know in their Play Store and everything like that. So I I I, I don't blame them. You know, you're gonna have to you know have to put up with that. Mm -hmm. But you know, in this article, it was really good that there's actually you know there's actually like 10, 10 good apps or good apps that you could look in here and you could just look through this uh article we'll post up it was through SAI and gives you some really good alternatives and and they also threw in some good ones for Android and Windows phone as well <laughs> i That's thought that awesome. was kind of funny yeah so yeah. why don't you take a look at that um you know we obviously look for the best ones so mm -hmm. we could uh, get as much syndication as possible That's and right. uh, you know i think uh yeah there's more than this the uh, app uh, podcast alternative, yeah, Apple yeah. Al podcast alternative. So. Yeah, we're on anyway, Stitcher I... too, people. So check that option out as well. That's a good one. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, so what do we have up next? You know, uh, we're going right through this. Uh, AirPod, the car that runs on air. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I've been really interested in all these alternative vehicles for such a long time, you know, yeah. alternative energy uh, vehicles. And I remember a long time ago reading about this sort of concept of like air cars, right? And and I'm like, God, that's you know, this just seems really wacky. And it was, you know, but they kind of work or something. Well, um, yeah. It turns out uh, this one comes from Core Seventy Seven. Thanks to Perrin Drum I love uh, for the story. Yeah. Uh, with gas prices, what they're saying is with gas prices rising and the massive drought making ethanol a tough sell, which is also very interesting. As a gas alternative, India's Tata Motors was hit on the perfect time. Uh, has hit on the perfect time to debut the AirPod, is what they're calling it. It's a small urban vehicle that, as its name suggests, runs on air. If you don't know much about how regular cars use fuel, natural gas or alternatively hydrogen is compressed in a pressurized tank, hence the pss -pss sound when you unscrew the gas cap. Or, you know, if you had like an older sibling or something like that, if you remember like a air guns or something like that, you yeah, know, they yeah, would, yeah, you know, yeah. torture you with those things all the time. Uh, you know, that compression uh, actually pushes something, right? So Tata enlisted the help of MDI, an engineering company that's been developing zero pollution engines since the early 90s. Uh, the AirPod has a 175-liter storage tank of compressed air that you can refill with an external pump or with an electrical motor that can refuel, in quotes, the car while it's in motion. Uh, the first model reaches nice. a top speed of 43 miles per hour or 70 kilometers. Uh, kilometers per hour for all you others, uh, making it best suited for transporting people or small goods around city streets, namely me and my family. <laughs> That'd be great for us here in San Francisco. Um, uh, let's see, city streets. Uh, one tank lasts over 125 miles or 200 kilometers and takes only two minutes to fill up uh, against an average price of just one euro per fill. So again, people, two minutes to fill up <laughs> against an average price of just one euro to fill um i'm sold yeah right so how long does it would it take to charge your you know electric car i think a little bit longer than that uh, the airpod has three yeah. seats for adults plus a smaller seat fourth seat for a child there's even room for luggage nice. it only has three wheels two doors and no steering wheel instead you have to drive with a joystick now that i think that could be the kind of weird thing here uh for people mdi has the public and service sector in mind here, naming runners, uh, messengers, and artisans as its uh, target market. The AirPod, uh, which is currently in its second phase of testing, is just one of five models <clears throat> MDI is developing. They're also working on a truck, sedan, convertible, and bus version. Tata and MDI expect to release the AirPod commercially in the near future for um, ten thousand dollars. Wow! Nice price wow. too, eh? <laughs> wow! Hey, you know. I, I like that innovation. Is I, I love any kind of innovation that just pushes the market, right? And that this looks like something at least I, I don't know if it'll get ever get adopted, but at least it pushes the market. A <laughs> I'll buy bit, one, right? Tony, right now, Tata, yeah, make it. I'll buy one. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, we'll put nerd cat, uh, nerd soccer all over it. So <laughs> we'll have the nerd soccer. There you go. You got. You're always thinking like that, man. Smart man, smart man. I work with here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So Greg yes, from yes, the yes. archives. <laughs> yes. What is this? Oh. Marissa well, Meyer again? <laughs> yeah, well, you, before you left, my friend, right, uh, yeah, they announced exactly. the, the, you know, the, before you left. What, Marissa isn't she Meyer still at Google? Mom. Why are we talking about this? No, 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 no. She's at Yahoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <Trapped laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, now, you know, she's the product guru, right? At least that was what she's touted as, right? And right. that that would help, help bring Yahoo out of the doldrums it is and revamp its products. But, mm -hmm. you know, behind every good product person, you need an operational person. True. So enter... Enter a executive talent firm search by uh, Spencer Stewart uh, okay. for a new uh, COO. You know, and I think uh, you know there's names that are being floated out there, like uh, the, the 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 person at Twitter, uh, Katie right. Jacob Standen, um, you know, former Googler. Right. Uh, so that definitely could be in the gun sites, and also Sheryl Sandberg at Facebook. I oh. think has been. Uh, mentioned as well wow. yeah I, I don't know if that's really going to work but i think um you know i think uh when we get to that one article at the end of this thing about mm. facebook i think maybe maybe it might be a good time to do that <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but hey polish up your resumes you uh, uh chief uh, operating officers out there yeah. you know 
Yahoo's looking for someone, and you get to work with one of the best product people they say in the business. You yeah. know, so Merz Meyer. So anyway, mm. I thought that was just something to mention. And then uh, really behind that, um, I, I decided to look up some of her uh, you know, philosophies about uh, product innovation, and we'll include that link on there. I thought it was kind of interesting mm. uh, since she is a product person, and she, you know, I, you know, I don't think uh, we're up at the uh, the Steve ranks yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no. I think uh, no, I know she's been like known to roll around in high society parties, and and she's been you know on a lot of like uh, I, I think uh, like fashion shows and things like that, and connected mm-hmm. with those type of things, retail supposedly, and like fashion in that sense. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. They're they're throwing around Sheryl Sandberg's name. Uh, I would see her maybe moving to a CEO position at a different company, uh, as you opposed think? to COO. Um, but yeah, uh, the way she's been like leveraging herself and getting press for herself. Um, yeah. So who knows? I think I, I think that's probably more of the case on there. You know, I mean, maybe maybe you know if. Uh, Katie Jacobs Stanton at that Twitter wants to go do something different than her international gig right now. Um, that might be something that could could mm-hmm. be interesting being mm-hmm. a CEO at at Yahoo with with uh, Marissa. Mm-hmm. So um, so let's let's see what happens. Okay, well let's go on to the next one. What? Oh, are are we are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready for the we're one there. we were saying about? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> The we're there. Facebook stock tanks again. Again. As insiders rush to sell. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Yeah, so thanks to uh, Brad Reed from uh, Boy Genius Reports for this one. Yeah, so one gets a feeling that buying Facebook shares on their first day of trading wasn't a very wise investment. Thank God I didn't pull the trigger on that one, man. I was so ready to. <laughs> yeah, uh, the social networking giant stock once again hit new lows uh, today, or yesterday, actually, uh, dipping more than... Uh, then 6% to close at uh, $19.88 and coming dangerously close to falling to exactly half of its uh, $38 IPO price, which it very may well have at this point. You know, by the time you're listening to this, who knows? Uh, the reason for Thursday's sell-off was simple. <clears throat> Some company insiders finally got their first chance to unload their shares, and they did so with enthusiastic gusto. <laughs> As Facebook's trading volume totaled around $157 million on the day, or five times Whoa. the average daily volume of 31 million shares. Uh, CNN Money oh. says that Facebook could be in for another big sell-off this November when the company will convert the special form of restricted stock units, or RSUs, held by most of its staff into actual shares of its stock. Um so, yeah, people, you know, there's this uh, really smart uh, financial analyst that I listen to quite a bit named Rob Black. You guys should check him out, robblack.com, um, who always says you never buy IPO at strike. You always should wait a year and then consider it, you know. And I think this is one of those cases where that, that sort of wisdom does sort of fall true. It's like uh, at this point we're it's things are still shaking out quite a bit. And now they're talking about November. Um, I don't think we're going to know true valuation of this company for some time, you know. No, no, no. I mean, you know, I, I think th- th- they're going to be continue to be known as the the company with the highest potential. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, because at this point, it's like options and potentials to get rich, and you know, all kinds of crazy sell offs, and maybe people speculating yeah. buying in. It's just too crazy right now. I think for that company. I mean, you know, with six seven hundred and sixty million users, you know, I mean, everyone's just drooling. But you know, I think they're scrambling to monetize it somehow. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So many possibilities. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the Groupon, Groupon isn't doing as well either. So, you know, there's, there's another case in point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Speaking of speed round. Oh, yeah. Speed round. <laughs> oh, I missed that. I missed that. So, Greg, I you're up. I missed that sound. Yes. I am. Okay, well, Mixi, which is a social network in uh, Japan, starts a new service for sending real birthday presents. Can you believe that? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so check this out. I, I, I thought this was just kind of cool, you know. So basically, um, Mixi, uh, you know, you have this little friend network, right? Okay. Uh, they have this notification mail when your friend has a birthday. Cool. And so what you could do, what happens is that you could then purchase goods from a list starting, you know, it's a modest list of about 50 articles, uh, you know, miscellaneous goods and accessories. And, and you could give presents together with messages to your mixy friends on their birthdays. Oh, <laughs> so my God. It, it sends a package, you know. I mean, yeah, I could see Amazon doing this someday, right? I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know why they haven't done that, but it was just kind of like, you know, Amazon, like, merged with Facebook, you know, <laughs> and then started doing 
crap like this, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I just thought it was kind That's of interesting. Wacky. You know, here, here, here I get notifications. Oh, it's your birthday. You know, it's your friend's birthday on Facebook, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, I just sent him a message. You know, the little box pops up. You know, mm. send him a message on their wall, yeah, right? Yeah. Here, you can actually send them a real thing. Present. I wow. Get, I, what, what the hell, right? What the heck? Jeez. You know, so anyway. That's my yeah. Very cool, man. What's yours, my friend? What's hey, yours? Hey, uh, Cinch, F- Cinch.fm. So, um, I don't know if many people have used it before. Bloggers, some of us know about it. Uh, what you do is it's a telephone. It was a telephone application, um, oh. and uh, you just talk into it, sort of. And their uh, Blog Talk Network is, I believe, the owner of this. And um, the COO sent out an email today saying uh, they're going out of business, man. They just can't do it. They can't afford to to run Cinch.fm anymore, and they're gonna just focus on Blog Talk Radio. And uh, and that type of thing is too bad. A lot of you bloggers out there used it and loved it very much. I know that there's some very enthusiastic mm-hmm. users. Um, there are mm-hmm. some alternatives out there, but it sort of throws into question like um, this whole uh, business model, or is it there a business model in this uh, sort of phone voice only via phone type of like uh, short form updating of uh, of whatever your your interests are, you know? But um, yeah. yeah. Too bad yeah. for Cinch uh, .fm. and if you got recordings on there, they're gonna let you download them. So you want to go there soon? That's uh, soon. Yeah. C i n c h dot f m. By the way, for all of you interested, drop that into your Dropbox folder as soon as possible. <laughs> Speed round. Oh yeah, well I have a good one. Uh, unlock a smartphone just by looking at it. So um, Emma Hutchings of PSFK uh, uh, gave me this one. Uh, if you have an Android uh, 4.0 ice cream sandwich, of course, uh, it lets you unlock your phone by just looking at it. Uh, there's a face unlock cool. feature that uses advanced face rec, rec technology to analyze the structure of your face. It's cool. really kind of cool. I want that. I mean, obviously you have to have a front-facing phone. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, a front-facing yeah uh, camera on the phone. But um, you know, security options requires you to register your face and then. It'll set it up and it unlocks it when it recognizes you. So I, th- I thought it's kind of like you know that like CIA ish yeah, type stuff yeah, coming yeah, out. Yeah. You know, I thought it was just kind of cool to just mention that. Yeah. I thought, yeah, all right. You know, I, you know they've talked oh, about cool. that for years, but yeah. now it's coming in reality. So I'll put my uh, Greg cool. Greg mask on and then get all his his dirty <laughs> secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, Boy Genius Report is uh, claiming that Android is under attack. So according to the security firm Kapersky Labs. It'll, the volume of new malware uh, targeting Android devices nearly tripled in the second quarter of 2012. Over the three-month period, the company found more than 14,900 new malicious programs targeting the platform. Uh, from before, it was only 936 in Q3 oh, 2011. Uh, that's monstrous, uh, that jump in number. Let's, let's One more time, people, for all you at home, going from 936 to over 14,000 uh, Trojans and viruses here on Android. So, um, not good. Nearly half of the malicious files were classified as multifunctional Trojans that were programmed to steal data from smartphones and could also download and install programs from remote servers. Oh. A quarter of the malware was oh made up of God. SMS Trojans, which are capable of sending text messages to premium rape numbers without the owner's consent, and 18% were considered backdoor threats that can give hacker- hackers full control over an infected device. And what they're saying is in the future, it looks even more bleak here. Uh, We expect not only more malware, but more effective and dangerous malware targeting Android. Um, So uh, what they're saying is judging from the existing trends, we should expect that cyber criminals will soon shift to more personalized attacks. Hooray! This is is primarily about... Uh, malware hunting for confidential data to which uh, which to steal money from users' credit cards. So all of those course. Google wallets on your phone and financial things on your phone, Android users. Uh, I think it's to so, time to suit up. Do I need uh, do I need to do the obligatory slit the wrist by taking a hammer to this <laughs> thing now? <laughs> you never know. You never know. It's we'll a bl- that was a. That was a downer story. <laughs> I know. I, we're going to close it off with a downer story. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, yes, yes, oh, yes, it's yes. tip time. 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 <laughs> I love tip time. Okay. Well, hey, you know, it, it's August. It's almost back to school, right? And I think we're on the back to school sales now, I see, all over the place, right? So That's right. I, I was kind of looking around and it said uh, 10 must download STEM, you know, science, technology, you know, math. Yeah, that's right. Uh, iPad apps for kids. Oh, cool. um, so parents, 
look at this article that I have uh, on 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 our podcast. Um, they went through uh, many articles that went through, uh, many apps that you could buy for your iPad, iPhone, whatever for your kids that would allow them to look at uh, math in a different way, look at technology in a different way. They had like a solar app. They had one that would did some physics, chemistry. It made it a little more fun. Cool. So uh, check it out. You know, let your kids use your iPad for that if they don't have their own, and just let them go out go to town on it. it, it it just basically makes engineering, math, and science fun. And really cool, man. Because I'm from Cal Poly, you better do it. You better do it. There you go. Always plugging the alma mater, aren't you, huh? I tell you, man. I tell you. Oh, you mean, you mean uh, wearing this, this doesn't really do it? Hey, oh, jeez. God. <laughs> Yeah, all right, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, so my tip, yours, my man? tip is uh, if for all you Chrome users out there, uh, page eraser is what it's called. It hides annoying uh, ads and other content on any web page. It's really cool. Um, <clears throat> I can confirm because I just installed it on Chrome and I've been playing with it for a few <laughs> days now. Of course. So what it does is a little extension you install. You just click install, go to the Chrome store, and it ex- ex- installs on Chrome on your uh, web browser. You'll see a little thing that looks like an eraser, an old-school rubber eraser. And uh, when you go to a page, uh, for instance, um, I don't know, some, some page, like your news page, right? And you see a big flashy blinky ad or something changing or, or a static ad or something like mm. that. You can mm. hover your little eraser over the, the sections. And what it does is oh, it can tell, nice. it turns it pink, the sections of the page as you're hovering it over, like squares, all the squares. Yeah. And you see it, and then you oh, just nice. click the eraser, and boop, it disappears. It's really fantastic. So a uh, wonderful job for uh, you people out there that made Page Eraser. Go check it out at Chrome Store, Chrome Store uh, Google Page Eraser, and uh, you wow. got it. So, like it. Yeah, events like coming it. up, Greg. We got a lot of stuff happening. What is, what's oh, up man. here? Well, we, New got, tech. we got SF New Tech coming up on August 22nd, Wednesday, mm-hmm. uh, uh, at Mighty, 119 Utah Street. Yeah. Uh, you'll have um, companies like Nifty. Um, I don't know what they do, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nifty. Yeah. <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like the name. Uh-huh. Talent Bin. Uh, they got uh, Park in San Francisco, which I think is pretty important for you and I. Cool. Um, app the Game and more. Hey. So um, I'll be uh, streaming live, and my uh, hopefully my, my co-host here will be uh, helping me out uh, with some uh, uh, pre and post uh, 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 comments about uh, what the pitches he saw that night, if you're going to be around. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds that's like, kind of cool. Sounds like a blast, man. Uh, so what else we got going on? We are uh, one of the media, honored media sponsors of the FailCon this year. Uh, so you definitely want to check it out. FailCon, go to thefailcon.com. That's on October 22nd, 2012 in San Francisco. FailCon's a one-day conference for tech entrepreneurs, investors, developers, and designers to study their own and other failures and prepare for success. Um this is at the Julia Morgan Ballroom in San Francisco. Some incredible nice. speakers. Ben Huff, founder and CEO of Cheeseburger. Uh, ben Cowitz, uh, a design partner at Google Ventures. Kathy Brooks, of course, nice. is always fun there. Uh, Chip Conley, founder of always Joie de Vivre Hotels. And a whole lot more. Just a whole lot more. Just, it's, it's, it's amazing what, um, what Cass... Uh, Cass Cass, Cass Phillips can can put together the amount of speakers and, and talent and and how good she organizes this event. So check it out. Check it out again. It's thefailcon.com dot com and res, register and show up. I love Cass. She does a good job. You're right. And so yeah. So I, I don't think we'll announce ne- uh, this week, but um, probably our next podcast. You know, we're going to be connected with a big transmedia event that's coming up in San Francisco in October. Wow. So we'll, I'll just do a teaser. Teaser there for yeah. you. More to I'll come. I'll tease you guys, yeah. but uh, there's more. There's there is more. So anyway. Uh, you know, if you uh, want to suggest some stories for us, uh, use the hashtag NRDSTK, yes, uh, nursesalka.com. Um, and uh, we're on iTunes, uh, audio and video. Please rate us. Uh, as well as the YouTube channel, uh, uh, Nerd Stalker TV. But we also have a new thing that we've created, a 24 by 7 Nerd Stalker podcast channel uh, on iBroadcast.tv. Yeah. You know, check them out. They just, they're just in beta. They just introduced a pre-beta event yesterday that I was part of that Excellent. looked at their new user interface, and it was beautiful. Cool. It's going to, uh, you know, the HD really comes out clear on there. Exciting. Um, really nice presentation. So, uh, yeah, catch out, uh, catch uh, Nerd Stalker TV at the iBroadcast.tv and the 24 by 7 music and podcast. Awesome. Also, so, don't forget to check us out on Stitcher, as we mentioned before. You know, um, Stitcher, 
uh, the application. You know, it's on iOS, Android, I believe. And uh, you know, just yeah. uh, just search for Nerd Stalker and, and just subscribe to the podcast. And you're if you're uh, one of those audio types or whatever, or you want to watch it on your phone, have at it. I think it's an audio feed. I don't I don't know, but check it out. It's, it should be killer. I believe it's the audio feed. But uh, yeah, I use Stitcher on my uh, on my iPhone now. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So okay. yeah, well, so I am uh, Adolfo Ferranda. And uh, yeah, y- if you want to email me, Adolfo at nerdstalker.com, at nerdstalker. Uh, thanks for listening and watching, people. And Greg, how do we find you? Uh, my name is Greg Voria. As you know, uh, you catch me on Twitter at Social Greg, or you can email me at uh, Social Greg at nerdstalker.com. So um, yeah, have a great week out there. Be careful out there. Uh, Keep on listening. And Cal Poly. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Thanks, everyone.